Hello everybody, another video for you today. This one is rather interesting and exciting for me. I primarily work from a laptop and normally only have a single screen to work with whenever I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing. And sometimes it's really helpful to have a second monitor. And so I've often thought to myself, wouldn't it be great? <clears throat> I've got this Android tablet sitting here. If I could just turn that into a a monitor when I needed it. Wouldn't have to be the most amazing experience in the world just so I could get that extra screen real estate and be able to just have something off the screen that I could, you know, all the reasons that you'd want to use a second monitor, right? So I've thought about it, thought about it, and I never really did anything. And uh, so I, I went looking and was able to find actually a project called Vert Screen. And basically what it's doing is creating a virtual display on your system that you can then broadcast with VNC and then with a VNC client on your tablet connect to and then essentially that virtual display is shown on your tablet. So basically it's an external screen. So I thought, okay, let's give this a shot and see how it works. And uh, I did run into a couple small snares, particularly with Plasma. So if you are using a different desktop environment, you may not have some of the issues that I've had. I believe that most of this holds true for, for any system, regardless of the desktop environment. I will also say that some of this is going to be specific to my hardware, which again is a Dell XPS 15 laptop. And so it has the NVIDIA Optimus Hybrid uh, 1050 Ti graphics card. So in my case, I had to, I'm using Kubuntu and I am using their NVIDIA Prime option, Prime Select. I'm running the Intel GPU most of the time because I don't really need the performance of the dedicated G GPU. I had to create a special file in the XOR configs in order to enable the virtual display. So based on your hardware, some of these instructions may not hold true, or you may have to do things slightly differently. You may need to target an NVIDIA card or an AMD card. The example I'm showing here is specific to this laptop, and you can likely just adapt it to your own hardware, your own system. And if you are going along and having any issues or, or anything, just feel free to post comments on the video and we'll try to figure it out. Vert Screen is a project that's out on GitHub and you have the, it's released either as an app image or as a dev file. So if you're running any Debian based system, you can just download the dev file and, and do it that way. And then the app image is going to be a more universal package format. If you choose to use the app image, just be aware that you need to install X11 VNC. And if you forget to do that, the first time you run vert screen, it'll actually tell you, hey, you don't have X11 VNC installed. So it's not like you can forget and, and cause a problem, but it's just something you're going to need to do. So you might as well do it while you're running through these steps. Just looking at the basic steps here, I already sort of talked about depending on your graphics card. So in my case, I needed to create this 20 dash Intel dot config file, and that goes at least on an Ubuntu-based system, and this may be true of, of all, I, I am not entirely sure, but uh, user share x11 xorg config d. You create that file in there, and then you need to restart x for it to take effect. And honestly, the easiest way to do that is to just go ahead and reboot. And the contents of the file, for me at least, are I'm identifying the GPU, the driver, and then in my case, because I'm using KDE Plasma, one of the issues I was having was uh, there was a lot of flickering happening. So as I was moving around and hovering over items on the screen, it would flicker and, and there was a lot of screen artifacts and it just was pretty ugly. So I did some searching around and actually found a fix for it uh, out on the Kubuntu forums. And I'll link to this in the, in the show notes as well so in case you need to uh, you have a different video card or something and you need to follow different instructions, you can go out there and, and take a look for yourself. But for Plasma, I had to put this DRI uh, 3 as an option. And after I made that change and rebooted, then I didn't have any of that flickering or graphic artifacts or anything like that. So it was fine. All right. So after you do that step, you would run virtual or vert screen and configure the options. So it's a pretty simple 
application. There's really not a lot to configure here. One of the things I'll say is that the width and the height were, uh, the, the default maximum it seems to allow is 1920 by 1080. So uh, 1080p. So my tablet has a 9.7 inch display. And although it's capable of a much higher resolution than 1280 by 960, when you are showing desktop applications, uh, the scaling is gonna be really small. And so in order for it to be visible and usable, I've just bumped the resolution way down. Uh, if you don't know what the common resolutions are, uh, Wikipedia has a list of common resolutions and depending on the aspect ratio of your screen, you can just look at different uh, resolutions as you go down. So 4.3, 4.3, and that's how I ended up at the 1280 by 960. All right, so you set your screen. And then the other important thing you need to do here is make sure that your virtual screen, your virtual device shows up here. If you do not see virtual listed and you only see the DPIs or DP1, uh, 2, 3, that means that your config file is not correct. So that's what happened to me initially. I wasn't aware that I had to create this uh, config file in Xorg. So I started the application up and, uh, and that option didn't appear for me and I wasn't sure what was going on and I had to go and do some research. And uh, so if you followed this and you used Intel, for example, and then it doesn't show up, then perhaps your driver is not Intel. And one of the ways that you could actually check that is to look at, let's say, inkc.g is an option. And so it'll actually tell you the driver that's in use. There are plenty of other programs that you can run to get this information. I think like NeoFetch is another option that might work, but I have inkc here. And so if you run it, let's say you configure it this way and it's not working, just check and see what driver's in use. And if it's a different driver, then you're going to have to probably configure a different uh, file in here. And, and I would say if it's NVIDIA, then, you know, you're going to do a 20-NVIDIA.conf and fill in the right information here. And again, hopefully uh, there's information here in this forum post that would help you steer you in the right direction. Okay, so... Once you have that configured and that shows up there, then you would enable your virtual screen. And it's a little strange, the feedback on this, it, it, it takes a second. <clears throat> it looks like maybe it freezes up, but it actually doesn't. Now that that screen is enabled, you need to go into your settings and then display and monitor and displays. And you'll see now, you should see your virtual display shown as you know an option here and it should be enabled if not enable it if it's not showing up here then something else has gone wrong again if you're having issues let me know and hopefully i can help you out for me that's all i had to do once that comp file was in place enable the virtual display it shows up as a display in my in the system settings uh, set this up apply and now, depending on your keyboard, for me it's function F8, but it will bring up a screen switching utility to allow me to set how I want that virtual display to be configured. So I'm going to say extend to right. So that's going to place it to the right of my main screen. And now the next step is to come back to vert screen, go to VNC, and click start VNC server. Now you're going to want to remember this address, or at least just leave this on the screen and then come over to your tablet. And I will insert some video of me doing this into the video so you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, so I've got, uh, I've got this up, as I said, now I come over to my tablet and I'm using BVNC free and I'll, I'll take some screenshots of the configuration just so you can see it. Um, so I've got my address in here. I've got a couple settings where it's uh, view only so that I can't interact with the touch and move the mouse around and things like that, which doesn't make sense whenever you're using just as a monitor. So anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and click connect here. And then you see now I have this secondary screen and I can now move applications over to that screen 
and it just becomes a second separate monitor. And I apologize if it, in this video you're seeing weird lines and things like that. That's not really showing up uh, when you're looking at it with your eyes. This is more of just a, a problem with the camera. All right, so I wanted to show you the settings for the BVNC uh, VNC client that I'm using on my tablet. And so I'm just connecting of a local wireless network to the IP address that's shown in vert screen. And really the only things that I changed here were the view only mode so that again, I wasn't accidentally putting inputs in by touching the screen. If you're having really bad frame rate for whatever reason, you could also reduce your color quality here. I'm getting probably somewhere around 10 frames per second, which doesn't sound great. And if you're using it to show video or something with a high refresh rate, then yeah, it's probably not gonna be great. But for what I'm using it for, and that's perfect, it's, it's more than adequate for what I need. One other issue that I've had was that the external display or the tablet display was flickering. It was almost as though the same issue I was having before I set the DRI option uh, in here was happening on the virtual display. I read a little further and in that same blog post, I was able to find that X render, uh, so changing the renderer under the compositing settings. So if you back, come back to display a monitor, compositor, this is normally set to OpenGL 2.0. And when I had it set to that, that's when all that flickering was happening. When I switched it to X render, it immediately fixed it. I don't know if there are any downsides to running X render as the back end for permanently. Um, I haven't used it long enough to know, but just know that if you're having that issue, then that, especially, again, this is a plasma thing. Um, I've run this on GNOME on Ubuntu and there were no problems whatsoever. Like it, it didn't flicker or there just wasn't any graphical issues. I still had to go through the same steps of setting up the, the file, uh, but I didn't have to put in this dry line, that option. One final quick thing that I've noticed. So since you are adding the Intel configuration file for X11 and you're using a hybrid graphics system like I am, if you switch to the NVIDIA driver, so in this case, if you were to use uh, Prime Select, and this is on a Ubuntu based system, and they have the Prime Select option, so I have it set to Intel. If I were to set this to NVIDIA and reboot, my session actually couldn't start because it doesn't like having that Intel value in there. I don't know if you're switching back and forth, but just if you have a system like this and that happens, that's probably what's happening. So in that case, you would just want to rename that file, which would essentially just make, make it not be recognized and therefore it wouldn't cause a problem. May or may not be an issue for you, but I just want to mention it in case that was and, uh, and anyone ran into that. So there you go. This is how you can use a tablet. And now they claim iPad, tablet, computer, basically anything that can connect to that VNC server, which is absolutely true. You can use that as an external monitor. In my case, I'm using uh, an Android tablet, but of course an iPad would work. I also know that there are ways to do this by the command line. This was just an easier way for me to get started with it. From here, if, if I had special needs to, you know, do certain things that maybe this vert screen program didn't support, then, you know, maybe that would be an option. But this just seems like it's very straightforward very simple, pretty user-friendly. There's some things you need to do, so it's not like as easy as just literally installing it and going, but the level of effort is pretty low, and hopefully this video will help get you there if this is something you're interested in. Okay, with that, I think I'm all done here. If you have any questions, comments, anything, please leave them below. If you are following the channel and want to see new videos as they come up, obviously subscribe. I will see you in the next video.